And there we go again. As promised, it didn't take too long. D2 row Romania. It's the fifth Spring Cup so far. We just saw the quarterfinal game. PR one versus Balkan Bears, and now it's time to go into the semifinals. Both semifinal games are gonna be pretty interesting. We have TCN versus Total Aggression here, and Gumba is playing versus Power Rangers. The first game is now up, and it is TCN versus TA, brought by us, Hafla TV, to you. Let's go into the draft. Yeah, this game should be really interesting. I mean, it's not the best of one anymore now. It has moved on to the best of three format. So definitely something more. I mean, it's not just go for one cheesy strategy or whatnot. It's less about luck and more about skill now. So we should see some really nice games, especially with total aggression in the mix because they always show us some nice moves and games. Yeah, total aggression. To be honest, one of my favorites in this tournament so far. Like the plays we saw coming out by them, similar to what Power Rangers actually did. So I don't know. Maybe maybe if TCN loses here, we see Power Rangers versus Total Aggression, like teams with similar playstyle. That would be amazing to come out. Like their Axe Darkseer combinations, or like overall they picked Axe quite a lot. Like the creep skipping coming out, and it it was just hilarious to watch. Early towers, In like Mocha. Total Aggression was actually name of the game, not just of the team. Anyway, we have to hop fast into the draft. Pretty standard bans coming out by TA here, the like in NDAA, but on for TCN side they take out the scent and the visage and that makes space for Invoker pickup. So Invoker on TCN side. Yeah, but total aggression they have the chance to pick up the Bat Rider if they want to, although they do prefer the Ancient Apparition, which is banned unfortunately, but still Venomancer in Mirana has been actually starred in every single of their games that we have casted so we might see those again but other strong heroes like the Batrider, like the Nyx Assassin maybe even the Tazzle could be picked up there yep definitely like Total Aggression they like unconventional picks but they make it work like none of their draft so far was chaotic in a way that you were like, oh my god, this is this is not current meta and it doesn't work out. No, doesn't everything work. they picked so far worked out and you were right, there is a Dazzle and they also saved the Puck already against the Invoker in mid. Yeah, I mean, the Puck does do, fa do fairly well in the mid lane against the Invoker, but whereas the Invoker usually stays in the mid lane for a longer time to just farm up a little bit more the Puck, just goes for the rune control and maybe with some nice runes goes to win the other lanes for his team so there are two very very I, I don't even know how to say like different heroes for the mid lane pretty much so the puck can be nice and I'm hoping that total aggression are gonna use some hero to combo with uproof now we see the next by TCN so they save heroes still according to meta I mean their their bands are quite unusual because like usually we see I don't know visage and send coming out in the second band rotation, but they choose to go for the first one. Like there would be still heroes in like the Furion, for example, to be banned if one of the teams doesn't want to see this coming out. Also, the Batrider is still up there. TCN decides to ban out the Clockwork, so this is one of the most popular initiation heroes like Batrider or Clockwork especially for the offlane so is this now a bat rider coming out by total aggression or do they just not care about the bat rider they go for something else yeah I'm not too sure I mean the bat rider would be really good but now that TCN has the Nyx assassin the bat rider is slightly less effective just because the Nyx can run into the firefly with the spike carapace and stun the bat rider up I mean it's still a really good hero but the Nyx just slightly countering it and well, Total Aggression definitely can still go for it. I mean, it's just such a strong hero that it's kind of hard to think that a team would pass it up. Yep, I don't know. Like, at the moment, I simply like the fact they already banned out the AA, so the Dazzle can go full out work. But, ah, uh, yeah, we saw this already coming by Total Aggression. You remember? Like, they banned from the second duration on, they, they banned, like, heroes that either initiate or are core heroes already for the other team. So the Luna is getting out and on the other side the Nakes is get 
getting banned as well so they don't want to see the nakes in the pack with the infest bomb and I think this is a wise choice to be honest yeah it's definitely not fun to go up against especially as the life dealer doesn't care about the spike carapace of the nicks either yep, so exactly. a really nice hero against the nicks already and they also take out like the initiations like usually that means for a game it, it's I don't know usually a bit slower because we don't have a hookshot now we don't have a lasso and we don't have a puck that has an infest bomb in it that makes it overall a bit slower like for the cast at least but I mean let's see what else is coming there they pick up a rubik and well, I mean, so far the Rubik has quite some spells to steal already. Like, pretty much everything uh, of the Nyx is useful. I mean, the Mana Burn maybe not having such a great impact, but if he gets the Impale or the Vendetta, that's always nice. And of course, whatever you steal from the Invoker is just as good. Yeah, the Rubik, I mean, looks like Total Aggression are going for a more conventional lineup than usually. But then again, two picks are still left, so they might turn it on our head once again. Hope I'm still hoping for the axe, especially if the Dazzle is in. <laughs> but T TCN, my, they have the third pick to take care of now. They could go for the Venomancer if they really wanted to. It's pretty nice against the Dazzle because even the Shallow Grave won't save you for sure with all the damage over time coming out. Yep, so definitely. it's definitely a possibility there. By the way, I'll leave you alone for one minute. I have to make light here. Like, oh, it's always the same. When I start casting, like, in daytime, then it gets later and later, and at some point I'm just sitting in the dark here. It's, and yeah, I'm at this point, yeah. so we're right back. Yeah, and we see TCN now picking up the Shadow Shaman, so going for one of the most ah. standard support heroes for the time being. But I really like the pickup because it gives... TCN some pretty nice pushing power with the Mass Serpent towards the ultimate of the Shadow Shaman and also the lockdown with the Hex as well as the Shackles onto the puck will be really key on actually getting a kill on that hero so a really nice pickup but total aggression they do go for the axe but will it be like a safe lane axe now farming up solo with an aggressive tri lane or are they gonna go aggressive tri lane creep skip with the axe go for early tier 1 tower, maybe get the tier 2 on top of that as well before like the 5 or 6th minute mark. Definitely a lot of options that can come out by TA at the moment and I'm really looking forward to see it. Whereas TCN, they have their two supports or well, Nyx Assassin I think is going to be the off lane. So they still need themselves a safe laner, something that can actually survive Axe jumping in or the Puck jumping in. The life dealer did get banned out by themselves, so that's not an option at the moment. As far as other guys go, a Spectre, maybe if they want to take this late, it could be a possibility. Other than that, they might pick up a jungler or a secondary support, maybe even something like a Sand King. Just epic initiation, loads of magic burst damage. Because total aggression, other than the Dazzle, they don't have too many like beefy heroes except for the axe when he gets his items yep absolutely agree but what about the naga naga is still in the game for tcn actually yeah, it could quite easily get picked up because if he's not the one getting initiated upon he can just song of the siren and save whoever the puck or axe jumped on Morphling. Yep, but no, that's the morphling it's a morphling okay that's now the second morphling of the day two games so far two morphlings yeah, well, it's it's exactly what I said about the last game. Like, the Morphling has to get big. Last time, the Morphling was quite nice in his net worth and the GPM he kept up, but the entire team around him was just falling apart. So, I don't know. That's kind of the danger of it. Then again, the Morphling, I don't know. Like, he has some nice setup here. If this is Quas, Wax, Invoker, Nyx, Assassin, Shadow, Shaman, they have push potential and the initiation potential coming out. So, the Morphling, you know... <laughs> has definitely a lot of space to just rumble around. I don't know, it might work out, but it might heavily go backflip. Yeah, it will just depend on if Total Aggression can live up to their usual standards of getting the early game lead and following that momentum up to the win. Or if they fail early on, this Morphling will be really happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, but I don't think he will be so happy, but you remember that we saw Total Aggression playing the Axe pretty offensively and then we had a second game of TA casted where the Axe was 
I think offlaning or jungling and there he didn't have an impact whatsoever. Was that total aggression or another team with Axe? But yeah, it was total aggression I think yeah. and I think they lost that game as well, didn't they? Yeah, they, they lost that game because their Axe only works out when they really go total aggressive, which the name sort of implies. So where they didn't go aggressive, their entire plan fell apart. The Axe not having the farm, the Axe not having the level whatsoever, so his impact on the game was was absolutely not significant. He was at some point he got the initiation up, he went in, but like he pretty much died even with Berserker's call up. So even the additional armor and everything, it didn't save him. So this axe, I really hope we're gonna see him again in a pretty aggressive role. Then again, you see a Shadow Shaman coming out, you see a Nyx coming out. Like these are heroes, like when they stun you in a wrong position as an axe early especially. Oh well. It, it It's a pretty dangerous thing. But we have the Mirana coming out as the last pick and I actually like it. The only thing I really don't like about Total Aggression's uh, game plan here is that, I don't know, the Mirana has to get the farm and it takes pretty long time till he gets that farm. In the same time, the Morphling will, like, even if he gets just the same amount of farm, the Morphling still comes out on top in a man-fight situation. I mean, of course, <coughs> that situation won't happen, but still, the Morphling, definitely the stronger care in my opinion. So, Total Aggression's game has to work out early pretty nicely unless that happens I just see it falling apart but this is a best of three it is the semi-finals of the D2 row so Disruptor. they have the chance to test around and come back in game number two if this one doesn't work out Disruptor is being the last pick and that means well nice utility again Nyx, Shadow Shaman, Disruptor and both like all three of them supporting an Invoker and a Morphling that is on paper, at least, it looks very strong. Yeah, TCN has the more solid lineup, but Total Aggression, they have the lineup that just snowballs out of control with the axe, getting the early levels, early blink dagger, going around, just culling, blading people left and right. So, hopefully, we'll see them snowball at least to some extent. <coughs> I mean, I I'm not saying that I want them to win or anything, I don't want them to lose either. I just want to see a good game. Yep, definitely. That's what we cast the one all the time so that the viewers enjoy it as well. Anyway, we go for a fast team introduction. I take Team Dia. We have Sisu now running as fast as he can on the Shadow Shaman to get a ward up. And follow. he's followed by We on the Nyx and Leon on the Morphling. In the mid at the moment we see Freezer also just running to get, I guess, a ward done on the Disruptor. And the Rise being in position to block his creeps with a very weird looking set, by the way, on the Invoker. Arise. So, there we go, that was Team Tire. And for the Radiant, for Total Aggression, Boko once again playing on the Mirana as always. The Standing Kircho playing the Tassel with FMP on the Rubik, leaving Faylets to take up the mid lane role on the Puck. And Edco on the Safe Lane Axe. Safe lane axe this time it is. Pretty interesting. Anyway, the, those two supports were rushing to get the wards down and we see it already. One is planted here in the mid giving nice vision there against rotations whatsoever. And the other one is here. Um, does this still block the camp? It's pretty much to the left. I don't think this is blocking the camp. I think they just want to see when he actually pulls the camp. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. I guess we'll find out in 15 seconds, but usually it is placed like to the stony area here. Yeah, even. exactly. If you, if you see it here, it's still blocking the camp and... But I don't know, like this is a new position, I have to admit. So we're gonna see it. And the creeps do not spawn. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Yep. So you still prevent the spawn. Oh, and the Disruptor uh -huh. found the invisibility rune. And at the moment it looks like dual lane for TCN. Versus tri lane and the solo lane on the axe for TA. Yeah, this disruptor doing something where maybe they just thought around that Kircho oh. TP's bottom yeah. as well. <laughs> they rotate, so just talking about it, now they suddenly have it as a mirror dual lane setup. I mean, it's a really nice idea by the Total Aggression because they cannot afford for the axe to have a bad start, so. This way, they make sure that the axe will be relevant in the game. Well, the problem about the axe is that he does not have a lot of region because he went again for the double stout shield build. So, if he gets quite some harass damage, then he can't go that aggressive. He needs 
like his tranquil boots or any other sort of regeneration. Yeah, that's not looking too good, but there's always the shadow wave from Kircho and the Dazzle, so he should be fine for the time being. Orlov, Freezer, is he gonna get caught? The Telekinesis not used yet. There's the Telekinesis into the arrow as well. The Disruptor might go down for the first blood, and yes, he does. Yep, that's a happy Mirana getting the first blood. So, first blood goes to TA, and also on the hero that needs it the most, it is the Mirana. The hero that needs a lot of farm to become like a dangerous right click. Yeah, it's definitely a really nice pickup and exactly what they needed. And we can actually see Axe just rotating into the jungle just a little bit, farming up so unlucky with the counter helix system at the moment. Yep, and Shadow Shaman at the same time, he got a double damage rune and Tesla has to take care of this. Like, if he gets shackled up, the wave by the Morphling doing quite some damage plus the double damage right click. I mean, he has now only picked up the Shadow Wave, no Shallow Crave expected and usually you see them going into poison so it's a dangerous situation having a dazzle solo on the lane yeah it's taking somewhat of a risk but if he gets the xp without dying it's definitely worth it because axe is all also getting the xp as well as some gold from farming up the jungle but freezer is on his way to the mid lane fail let's seize it and backs it backs off straight away both observer wards on top of each other Puck knows everything that's going on. <laughs> yeah, since this wasn't like a smoke gank whatsoever, they had no chance. But uh, Dazzle went for the poison, by the way. So. Oh, there's the Berserker call onto Leon. There's the counter Helix as well. But a nice Shackles coming out by Zizo. Make sure that the Morphling gets the waveform out. Yeah, the Morphling just with 530 HP. So if he gets like two or three spins, like within a new creep wave just arriving there, it's pretty dangerous. The axe could, with some lucky spins, kill him anytime. Yeah, he most definitely could and arise. Are they gonna go for fail? Let's the cold snap does finally come out. There's the illusory orb, the glimpse used and oh, nicely done. I think Puck is gonna take the fall, but axe got the kill on Shadow Shame and in the meantime, the tornado kills off Puck. So a one for one. Yep. A one for one trade, the, like Shadow Shaman going down by the axe, but in mid, I think this is an even more important kill that the puck is actually now on the back foot against the invoker, and axe is gonna be happy about it. Like, he's gonna pick up, yeah, he's going for tranquil boots, just as I expected, and that's the region he needs. Even though if he stays on lane, like, those tranquil boots will be permanently deactivated pretty much, but I guess he will go into the jungle and do what we saw many times on him. He will put the tranquil boots on the ground so that they are activated. We see it right now. No? He does not. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's not doing it just because you said he will. He's yeah, like, I guess he's no, I won't do what the characters say. <laughs> but the disruptor has the invisibility rune and he knows where the axe is. He's just waiting until he gets some lower HP and then... It actually gets dangerous for them. He still has like half the duration of the invisibility rune, but now Axe has been blocked by the yeah the disruptor not having any boots. So at the moment he just I don't know. It's just a normal ward running around pretty much. Yeah, but he might still go for the dazzle. Dazzle is quite out of position at the moment. Freezer has to get away, but I think he got spotted out. He might be in trouble in return or no? No, they didn't see him. That night vision. There's. The initiation onto Dazzle, Axe wants to go in as well, Leon, the Berserker's call not hitting the waveform, comes out with the Shackle onto the Dazzle, he is about to fall or shoot at least, the Berserker's call getting on Zizo, the Glimpse comes out and Leon will get the kill or will hit the Shadow Wave, they're still alive somehow as the Axe still giving chase, the Morphling is alive as is everybody else and everybody should be fine, or oh, Leon, Battle Hunger on him, Freezer, Berserker's call as well. But there's no counter helixes or are there. <laughs> Talking about God. the counter helix. <laughs> he was so <laughs> unlucky with those helixes to be honest. Like usually it's spin to win, but like for him it was really like I don't know, he just didn't didn't get the spins he needed. But there on the disruptor he was finally lucky. After three hits he finally got one spin and that was enough to kill off the disruptor. So the entire fight nobody went down and eventually in the end Oh Mirana just tried to arrow the Nyx, but yeah, a creep just soaked it up. I mean, the Nyx is kind of happy here. The Mirana is level 6. She got the first blood, but that was all the time a support on the lane. But the Nyx being now alone for quite a while, he's level 6 and a, a bit beyond. 
That looks pretty oh, good TP's for him. OTP's coming in. There's the Berserker Skull onto Ciso. Illusion Orb as well. There's the remaining Rift onto the Morphling as well. They get one kill. Can they get the second? The waveform goes out. And looks like he will be safe and the tower is about to fall as well. Yep, total aggression. The early and total aggression. Oh, oh Arrow onto then. Freezer, the Star Storm. He doesn't have enough mana for it. Now on the run, will there be a glimpse? Yes, there is. Nyx Assassin is waiting for it. There's the Impale as well. The Vendetta damage coming out. And the Kinetic Field making sure the Mirana doesn't run away. Yep, very nice play there. To be honest, that's really good. I also like that the Disruptor is going now into Klimps. The level 2 Klimps already has quite a nice range. And he had the mana for it. That's... I just like the Disruptor simply for the fact that you have a Puck you want to bring back, you have a Mirana leap, you want to bring him back. Like this... Oh, Dream Coil used on the Morphling, but the Strength Morph keeping him alive for the time being. Yep. But this Klimps, trust me, in this game the Klimps will have a huge impact. Like, depending on how well the Disruptor plays it, this Klimps is gonna hurt. Uh, total aggression, for sure. Yeah, it's already landed them at least two kills. So, definitely has been already an asset, only seven and a half minutes in. And once it's on level four, it's spe especially good against the Mirana, because Mirana is like, oh, I leap away, I'm safe, but suddenly Klimps back, nothing to do anymore, and that's the kill. Yep, and Mirana's farm is, I mean, it's still okay, even though she died now. She finished the face put, she got the Basilos and, and, and complete stick, but now TCN wants to rotate in. There's nothing that could spot it spot him out so they can go for the Rubik but there comes the sentry ward so there's the protection against the Nyx for example coming in with Vendetta and where's the Nyx now anyway Nyx is in the base but he will if he comes back definitely go for a gank attempt yeah he most likely will and that's exactly what he needs to do as well he's heading towards the bottom lane at the moment maybe to pick off the axe before he gets the blink dagger and with the axe actually being so damn close once he kills off these creeps he might have it, the Tornado EMP misses mid lane, or well, well, Tornado hit the Dazzle, but EMP didn't get anything at Axe. Oh, he's getting hunted down by the Vendetta, we definitely want to grab this skill. Shadow Shaman not coming in to help though. The Vendetta is about to run out quite soon, if he wants to go, he has to do it now. The right click comes out, there's the Impale as well with the Mana Burn, but Moonlight Shadow is used, just as a yeah. countermeasure. And the second they see the Moonlight Shadow, they just don't go. But the Moonlight Shadow gives them the opportunity to go for a rise in the mid. But yeah. Oh, the Tornado missing again. And this time the EMP doesn't hit anything again. Yeah, so the Invoker just keeps on farming the mid lane. Went for a Drums of Endurance. And so far he hasn't had the greatest impact. Sure, he killed off the puck, but that was more of the Disruptor being really nicely positioned. Oh, there's the cold snap onto the ruby. Impale as well by the Nyx assassin, but the dream coil with the waning rift stopping the initiation. There's the telekinesis used. I think everybody might survive this. Oh, there's an arrow. Oh, and they dodge it both. It looked for a second they might run in, but on the bottom lane, the disruptor being in trouble. Yeah, he goes down as well. The blink dagger was up on Axe, but Kurcher trying to TP out and will be successful. There's the berserker skull as well, Axe. Now on the run, in return, there's oh, enough the mana for the waveform actually. Yeah. Axe might go oh, down, but, but he's not chasing. doesn't go for it. That's interesting. He does not go for it. I don't know. He had like 400 HP. The waveform level 3. Oh, but the Nyx Assassin is chasing the Axe. I don't think he will have enough damage though. There's the hit. Impale as well. Mana burn. He doesn't have enough mana oh, for it. He could have carapaced and reflected that. Hit, I guess. Oh, there's the Berserker Skull, he does have enough, Spike Arpas comes out, it's not enough for the time being at FMP, is there paid for Telekinesis and the Calling Blade. He should have done that Carapus, it would have been a second stun on the wall, but then again you never know when the wall happens, so there he got it instantly uh, on the second hit. With the Carapus this would have been a kill, this way around the Ruby coming in, Calling Blade and Axe is gonna be really happy. This was really oh top lane though. There's the tornado EMP hitting Mirana. His code snapped up as well. Will he get glimpsed back? Yes, of course he will. There's the kinetic field waiting for him, and he's just gonna fall to the pure right clicks coming out. Yep, there it goes. And I was talking about the glimpse. This is the third time the glimpse does work against the leap or the orb of the puck, for example. The disruptor pick doing work here. Yeah, definitely a really nice pickup so far. But puck now hunting. He has the enemy's rune. Edco is hunting as well, has his blink dagger on the axe. So I think Arise might be the next target for them at the moment. Yep, and this is definitely possible. The axe just needs to land the proper call. 
Oh, there's the Berserker score coming out. No spins, though, that the Silent with the Illusion Herb is enough. But no mana for the Dream Coil Tornado comes out as well. The Cold Snap onto Faylets. Will there be a wave for me? Yes, there, of course, there will. A few more right clicks, but the Moonlight Shadows comes out and they should be safe. But another blink. But the Berserker score came out too late, so arise. Running away and let go. There's the Sentry Ward. Glimpse coming out as well. The arrow hits a creep and Vendetta impale onto two heroes. There's the wave for one to three. The kill of two and they're chasing down Kurcho. He's still alive thanks to the Shallow Grave, but not for long. Telekinesis comes out of a silence with the loser of everybody's solo dream coil as well. Arise does take a fall as Puck escapes. Oh, nice three man for Circus Call. Calling Blade number one, number two as well. Will there be a third freezer on the run? Kinetic field stopping them from going any further, but Faylets is there. Glimpsed Dagger. up and one more right. Dagger click. is ready. Dagger axe, yeah. Oh, what a dunk again. <laughs> Triple dunk by the axe. Like, nice. Perfect timing. Coming back to the end of the fight. And it started out as, as a disaster for total aggression. Uh, but I don't know, with all the heroes coming back. TZN absolutely overextending. They should have just went back at some point. I mean, they got the free kills. There's a TP coming in. We just TP'd in, but oh, Axe actually backs off. They probably thought more of rotating in. <laughs> the Axe, such a such a happy guy. A triple dunk. This is something you, you always like. I don't know. I think Axe is one of those ultimates in the game that have like amazing load of endorphins for each and every player because the dunk, the sound, the animation and just this, I don't know, it's just finishing of people like this, it's just the best feeling in Dota whatsoever. This, it's so fun to watch as well and the level 1 Culling Blade actually only 60 mana cost so that's why he can just keep spamming out. He does have the magic stick as well which doesn't give too much mana region but level 1 Culling Blade, sure he wants the level 2 to dunk even more with a higher kill threshold but so far he's been doing really nice and he might go for it he doesn't see V though and he might get caught Leon is coming in as well V will he go in he has the vendetta there's the TP is impaled to start things out the waveform not used yet just in case but the arrow into the morphing FMP is there as well but there's the shackles EMP axe will go down and Leon drops so down low he uses the waveform with the strength morph to escape and there's a nice silence 4 man dream coil they get the one kill V is about to drop as well. Three heroes down arise, taking a fall to the fate vault of the Rubik. Oh my god, what a disaster for TCN there. What a disaster. And they're oh, gonna is going to keep on chasing. More. But he's gonna get Klimps back at some point. Yeah, I hope so. Freezer, come on, go for it. Klimps him back. <laughs> he just doesn't care, just keep on running, man. <laughs> Okay. There's the blink, illusion of raining rift, a few right clicks might do the job and yes they will, oh, oh no the they stick. won't buy you. This stick is preventing the kill, so the greedy puck, like actually a nice play coming out there, but like lightning fast reactions by the disruptor, really nice. Before the last hit that was a lethal one came in, the sticky usage and it was not enough and then puck was just not risking it to stay longer under the tower. So, <laughs> pretty nice place coming in. Oh, and again, Puck just going aggressive. He's going for so much harass damage at the moment. Just blinking in. The Waning Rift comes out. The orb damage on top of it. And yeah, TCN. Oh, bottom lane. Hex on the axe with the Serpent Force and the Shackles. There's an EMP on top of it all. And that's the axe going down. Yep. Like, this time they got the axe without, I don't know, losing the entire team for it. Like, in, as we saw on the top lane. This was, was such a disaster for TCN. Like, they get... Oh my god, there's an arrow, but yeah, it misses on the next. But they go for the axe and they're happy to get this kill, but like in return, the entire team is following up behind Foreman Dream Coil. Like a really nice play coming out there, and it almost leads into a team wipe of TCN. Oh, there's the Impale, but Faylet comes in. Double Man Dream Coil into the Waning Rift. Breezer is about to fall. The Kinetic Field won't help too much. The EMP Tornado onto Bako, the Mirana in big, big trouble. There's the Cold Snap finally coming out. One more right click. Arise gets the kill, there's Caesar with the Hex onto the puck, Shackles is under the tower, they're gonna get the counter kill. Nice, nice one, really nice one played there. Unfortunately they didn't get the deny hit there on the tower, but nice play coming out. The puck, so far it looked like, wow, TA got this, like two man dream coil, they got the two kills up, but nice rotation coming in and making it a two for two, even on pretty crucial hero for TA. Oh, the circus call onto Leon. Creeps are coming in at the same time. The slam dunk not in range. And the telekinesis onto the creep. Oh, he missed target. FMP, how unfortunate. 
There's the glimpse now onto the axe, into the silence as well. He might go down here. Is there enough damage actually? Lion on heavy strength, but a nice impale onto two heroes by V. They might get FMP as well, or do they know? There's the Moonlight Shadows coming out, and he makes his escape. Oh well, like after all, still a better trade. It was, to be honest, I was really afraid that the the silence of the disruptor is fading at some point, and the morphling is just getting a dunk. But fortunately, <laughs> the duration of the silence is so long, and the axe was per like permanently in the kinetic field. So, yep, yeah, pretty lucky there for the morph. And I think it's about time to look at the graphs to yeah. actually see who has the lead. Like TA has pretty much or had a 5k lead there, but like with all the fights of like the recent minutes, it's 2,540A at the moment, and yep, 5,000 gold for TA as well. So total aggression. I mean, they have been living up to their usual standards so far, but they cannot let down the pressure whatsoever. I mean, sure the morphling isn't farming as well at the moment, but if they don't keep on getting the kills, getting the towers. This Morphling will catch up at some point. Yeah, the Morphling at the moment, 328 GMP, but... Oh, they go for the Axe. Oh yeah, they might get it. The EMP is there, the Hex as well, the Shackles to follow up. Oh, no Shackles yet, but the Serpent Wars is enough, and actually doing damage to Rubik as well. There's the Silence, but he doesn't get anything into the Genetic Field, but a nice glimpse onto Payless. The Puck won't be a part of this fight. Oh, and the Puck actually ending up in mid versus the Morphling. <laughs> and almost Just dying there fighting. as well. And now the next oh, comes Oh, is there. There's the Vendetta hit Impale. Misses at the moment, but it won't get dodged as the way it forms. Nice. Does get the kill. This is a nice end for a Klimps that was, was just supposed to just get... Supposed to get the puck out after he TP'd in. So, but as I said... I don't know, I said it like 10 minutes ago. This Klimps is gonna have such a huge impact. And it actually does. This Klimps has been so spot on almost every single time. Ending up in a kill. Too really unfortunate that he didn't get any heroes in the connected field. He was so close to catching two in the static storm connected field combo, but even yeah. without that, it was a pretty nice fight for them in the end. Yeah, I definitely liked it. It was I don't know, like it's it's always hilarious to see someone TPing in and instantly getting Clems back by the disruptor. And this time it was not just, you know, someone from base who was just ending up at the fountain again, it was someone who ended up in mid where Morphling was waiting to do like almost 50% of his HP pool. Oh, Tornado EMP onto FMP Rubik on the bottom lane with the cold snap to follow up. Will there be a Hex? The other shock comes out, but they don't actually have enough to get the kill. The yes. EMP doesn't do damage when there's already no mana on Rubik. Yeah, but I don't think they were even planning on it. Like he could have gone for the sheep, but to be honest, I think this was just a Moonlight Shadow bait. Now that the Moonlight Shadow is out, they know, okay, we're safe for a bit. They also didn't have any vision. There is just three observers at the moment on TCN, and now he used the dust of the Nyx. Was that the Shadow Shaman? I think both had. Yep. They used the smoke, and they rotate into the jungle. Yeah, they, the EMP tornado, fairly low cooldown, so can keep spamming them out. And they actually might run into free, but looks like total aggression. They want to find man the tier 2 tower, maybe. But we has the Vendetta on and definitely on the hunt. Oh, Kircho, poor, poor Dazzle Impale. Hex just in case as well and Invoker grabs the kill. But oh. it's an arrow in return. Yeah, but now with the arrow he actually gave away his location. So he might find himself to... Yeah. Have but to they use smoke up TP. again, oh god. They want to go for the Mirana. Mirana leap away. Come on TP. Tornado! Oh, just mid leap. He tried to TP out oh, and. He interrupted the TP. Oh god, he's gonna go down. The impale misses, but there's nowhere for him to go. Way from getting the vision and shackled up. <laughs> so unlucky. Like, like first the tornado gets him in the leap, so he doesn't leap far away. And then, oh my god, but I think Freezer is now in trouble as well. Yeah, Faylet finds him at the moment. Right click's coming up, but a nice silence actually. And TP <laughs> out. Freezer, my god, what a play. That's that's a nice use of your ultimate. I mean, it's low cooldown anyway. We look at just like what 80 seconds, and he's level nine. The the next one, yeah, it's it's fairly low cooldown. So and he gets away with it alive. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, he really didn't think he will be able to pull it off. But the puck got a little bit too greedy, too cocky there. Should have started with the waning rift. It would have bought enough time for the axe oh, to actually. Oh, but he comes it. again. He goes back into mid. 
Now being overconfident maybe by the play he just made. Oh, and there comes the blink. Axe is just blinking out that Roshan is happening. But Roshan already 50%. The puck will scout it now. Yeah, there's a glimpse as well, just as the Vendetta hit came out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny sight, but we... He is just trying to box out the enemy. Roshan is dropping really low. There's a nice tornado EMP. He catches two heroes as well. Faylets almost drops down to it. The puck. Can he go in? There's the Berserker's call. Nice. Defending blast, but an arrow five seconds into a rise. There's the dream fell as well. Edco gets the one slam, gets the second one as well. The age is already forced out. Will they go for more invoker? Buys back as well. Leon, nice waveform, gets the kill onto Faylets, and looks like total aggression on the back foot at the moment. FMP gonna get picked off into the cold snap, but ew, the arrow five seconds again. <laughs> but nice ages snatch there. Really nice snatch. I think the morphing got the ages. After yeah, all. but like, yeah. oh yeah, the kill went to the total kill aggression. went the other side. So Axe, Axe's little sacrifice that was actually good, like absolutely going in, getting the kill, and Wolfling has got the snatch on the ages. Definitely, the viewers are gonna be happy about it because it's raining items. <laughs> yeah, actually, considering this fight, I think total aggression, it went as good for them as it possibly could have with Faylet's going into the fight with like 150 HP or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if the puck hadn't been caught in the Tornado EMP, this fight would have gone a hell of a lot differently, but Arise just spot on plays on the Invoker. It's amazing how equal this game is, like I wasn't promising too much there. Like it's 17 to 17, we are 23 minutes in, this is the best of three, and so far we got nice plays coming out. Like. Yeah, absolutely not disappointing this game, and there's even more to come. Yeah, and actually we haven't looked at the Mirana at all. He has taken the lead in net worth now. He has a Yasha, face boots, and now working towards the BKB, but there's the Hex coming out. Yeah, there's Shock as well, Impale when they die, but a nice Berserk as well. Lot of three heroes, he does miss the slam dunk though. There's the Ethereal Blade coming out by the Morphing, but he's so damn low. He has the Morphing to strength, he's so out of mana. Doesn't even activate his double damage runner. Three heroes going down for TCN. Okay, that was a very, very failed gank attempt. Like, they thought they get a single Marana out, and what happens? The entire team was already on the way to back her up there. Okay, that was not as planned, for sure. Yeah, I can't say I'm too fond of Morphling going for Ethereal Blade first item after power threat it's, I mean you saw that he was so highly morphed into agility which he doesn't have too much of at the moment anyway so once he actually used it he was forced to just straight up morph to strength but then suddenly out of mana not using his double damage rune either so just misplaced getting too overconfident there but yeah that's Mirana finishing up his PKB as well thanks to it and the axe with the blade mail he will be able to tank as well as yeah. do some nice return damage. And so far, to be honest, like the two MVPs of this game is really the disruptor for TCN doing so much work. But on the other side, I mean, so far no, none of them is like really outstanding in the plays. Like it's pretty normal what's coming out. But the axe with the initiations, even now in this gank, if he didn't get like this Freeman call up again, like maybe they would have gotten one return kill there on the morph simply for the fact that the shotgun is out. But Getting all three into it, giving time to the team to you know to go up and get the disables out, like really nice plays by the Axe. Not to mention, of course, the Roshan steal we just saw. So yeah, Axe definitely. Oh, Zizo might be in big trouble. Fail. Let's will find him. There's the silence with the Berserker's fall, and the dunk doesn't come out thanks to a nice in pay. But the static storm is there. Catches fail as well as Enetko. On the Axe, EMP misses though as a nice use came out. And will they turn it around? There's the Ethereal Blade coming out with the waveform, but Boka uses the PKB. There's the Telekinesis onto Leon. He's still alive, but goes down to the waning rift of the puck. And they're chasing for more. They got two, they want. Oh. Faylet's actually going really aggressive, but the Vendetta was already used. There's the cold snap, but he gets the Ethereal chant out. Yep, a two for null trade, and. I don't know, just thanks to some good plays coming out by TCN that it's not even more. Oh, Tornado EMP, but it misses completely. Well, it got the dazzle at least. Oh, there's the Berserker's call as well. Arise might go down in Ice Impale once again. But that doesn't change the fact that this Invoker is dead. And we getting chased down as well. Faylet drops low to the mana burn. But should be able to get the kill. One more right click. 
He uses the face shift blink and oh nicely toys the fails. He's so on the hunt for the puck. Can he track him down? No. The silence waning rift coming out. He can't keep it in place or can he use scepter? Come on team. Team help him out. No, they're not going for it. <laughs> There's no team behind him. But yeah, TA already got a two for null trade and then on top of it another two for null. So this will end up I guess in the tier two tower, even though it's still high HP, but Axe is already going man mode here. And we yeah. see again, by the way, uh, a Ghanim Scepter Axe coming out. Just 6 second tank cooldown, I mean, even if it fails at the first time, in 6 seconds he can try again, otherwise he has to wait 65 seconds at the moment, so that's a pretty huge difference. Yep, yeah, sometimes he is a bit impatient about the dunk, so it goes out, like the dunk is really, it's really so crucial that you actually land the dunk below the threshold of the HP. But either way, I was just looking in the graphs, we have 7,000 or now 10k after the two fights, it just got updated. 10k ex uh, gold advantage for TA and about 5,000 experience for TA. But now, they at least try to get the tower. The cliff is coming out in total aggression, answering instantly. Three people walking there, axe moving there, and this is 360 gold. Just traded away for a bit damage on the tier 1 tower, so... I don't know, not not really worth it. Like those feeding those wards is never a good idea, but then again, they have to do something at the moment. TCN definitely has to do something to get back into this game. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean Leon on the Morphling chest has been dying after he picked up the Ethereal Blade. Something like well the Lincolns wouldn't have been too useful, but just straight up Manta style maybe would have been better. And yet they're just falling behind the Payless with the haste run just going ball steep in the mid lane. Yep, and I think TA, they want to go for more. Like, I mean, their name is Total Aggression and you always can see that like it's itching for them. They want to go for something. They want to answer, they want to gank or they want to go high crown. Like last game, for example, we saw, I don't know, like PR, for example, having the game pretty early. But they were still playing around, playing absolutely safely, you know, just getting all the advantage up you can. So at the moment, I'm, I'm curious what it, what they go for. Smoke is coming out. They want to have a high crown initiation and then go for it. Yeah, there are only two heroes in the base actually. There's the Berserkers call on to a right. The EMP comes out before, but the Static Storm catches nobody in the connected field. The right. Telekinesis back as well, but four steps himself to the high ground. Should be safe, the EMP. Oh, actually the first one was Rubik's stolen EMP. But no kills happening and they're just TPing out to defend their tower once again. Yeah, they just want to prevent that the morph is getting the solo farm while they clash into, I don't know, many people high crown. Well, I guess Total Aggression, they do have a significant enough lead at the moment that they do have time before the morphling gets too big, I mean, they actually have a lot of time before the Morphling gets huge. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, it doesn't really look good. Like, in net worth, the Morphling is at 3.9, the Invoker at 3.8, and like, the, then the free, I don't know, most farmed hero, like, 11 and 10k on Axe, Marana, and the uh, Puck, so, yeah, definitely looking better. The item, I don't know, like, the gold distribution at the moment looks kind of decent. Oh, we see Moonlight Shadow coming out versus Oh god, versus a smoke and yeah. they don't have the gem, but the ghost wall got used by a rise. Did they actually spot out the Moonlight Shadows with this observer here on the lane? I don't know. I don't even know why the Moonlight Shadow was used. Like, it was to... I don't know, prevent the smoke ha from happening, like catching them out. I mean, there is one ward coming here uh, in the jungle. They might have seen it there, that the smoke was happening. Yeah, maybe. But looking at the items for TCN now, the pickups, I mean, Zizo has the Blink Dagger finally on the Shadow Shaman, as well as the Orchid finished up on Arise, and he's on the hunt with the Ghost Walk. Actually, he might get the Mirana, oh, never mind, he has the BKB, so he should be fine, even if he does get Orchided up. Yeah, and finally, the Shadow Shaman is getting uh, the tier 1 tile with the Serpent Wards. He's also gonna clean up another wife there, so this is gonna be a really happy Shadow Shaman. But so far, I mean... The master rewards, except for that one Roshan and now the tower, we haven't seen them too much in action. That's the big problem. Like Shadow Shaman only being in action for pushing purposes. I mean, uh, I mean for disabling purposes. Like the pushing power of the Shadow Shaman didn't really come out so far. 
Yeah, it ha really hasn't been too significant at the moment. But well, at least they got that one tower because of it. And thanks to that goal, the Disruptor actually bought himself the gem. So they can counter ward now. But then again, total regression, they have a gem on their own on the Dazzle. Oh god, we with Zizo might get to God. Illusion comes out, Berserker's call misses. Nice blink by V into the Vendetta. FMP is still chasing Pelets as well. But they can't find him or can they TP out, man? We TP. Now he will blink even further away. Yep, there's the blink, and now they go for it. So, really nice. The gem is there on a the dazzle, but they didn't get anyone. So, really nice escape there by TCN. The entire rotation of TA was for nothing. And in the meantime, the morph is happy because they buy at least some time. Also, TA not too great in farm anymore because, yeah, all the time they spent together. Now the axe is actually coming in. But. Oh, the axe might be in trouble if there's yeah. the orchid. There's the tornado, but nice blink away. Both teams so fast on that blink reaction. Yeah. Oh, but, and look oh, at the this might be a clash. Yeah. Moonlight Shadow Moonlight. Wheel as well. There's the Hex by Felix onto Leon. More playing telekinesis stuff as well. There's the Berserker's call, and she's just getting brought down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he just got. He just exploded pretty much. Yeah, it's, I mean, just as you were saying that Leon finding the farm on the bottom lane, yeah. suddenly not so much farm for him. <laughs> and now the gem is also doing work there for, oh, and they go into Roshan, they know the morphling is, we have to look into the buybacks. Like, there is a buyback on the morph, but I don't think they're gonna contest it. Like, the X, but look at the damage, there's not much damage coming out. They need the Marana to do some right play. Yeah, if the Mirana leaped in as well with the extra attack speed, maybe. I mean, the Mirana doesn't hit that hard. He has the Manta as well as the PKB, so no damage items coming out yet for him either. But as far as team fights go, they should be fine still. The Axe is doing so much for them. And he's actually about to hit level 16 rather soon as well. Yeah, so the dunk is gonna be even more. So, but they get the uncontested Roshan, only the Tornado is saying hello. We know what you're doing, but since the Morphling was dead and he didn't want to spend the money on the rebuy, there was no way they could contest whatsoever. I think Ciso is looking f just into placing his Serpent Wards there at the tier 2 tower, like some sort of split push attempt, but TA, they won't be as patient. They go. Oh, oh they go nice. for the illusion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Impale, actual one coming out onto two heroes as well. Very nicely timed there, but. Mech up and they go for the tower even more now. Yeah, they have and so Ciso, much heal already. Oh, Ciso finally TP's back. He might go in with the blink hex onto the puck. If he dares initiate like that. But the glyph comes out suddenly. Mirana just right clicking away from the low ground without putting himself in too much danger. And leap out from the EMP tornado. So yeah, they still get the tier 3. The clip was used. Like nice plays coming out there by T8. Oh, and oh, there's the Berserker's called Freezer getting caught. Ciso is there with the Hex. Serpent Wars in Pale as well. Pale, let's might go down, but a nice shallow grave and Boko just goes to town with the PKB. One smack, the second slam dunk as well. Really get the third. The Chasing Lion. He's dunk. <laughs> yep. Kill for the act. So much dunking. It's like watching an NBA star. It's like dunk, the dunk, the dunk. And Axe is going for E. Four. Oh, oh no. Got but that fake bot, man. Move. Rubik, don't be stealing dunks. Yeah, Rubik. We just wanted to see the fourth dunk there, and not happening. Anyway, not just Axis being happy, I'm also very happy. Each and every dunk just makes me smile, and this is a very good thing. This was game number one of a best of three semi finals in the D2 row, brought to you by Hafla TV. I'm Hafla Moog, with me is Coucher. Just hang in there, because we just jump into the next game. The chance for TCN to come back. They're definitely not. A bad team they just yeah it just didn't work out for them the morphling again not getting the farm shotgun was up but it didn't shoot anyone in the next game we're gonna see what that